Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. Hey, you all doing? Welcome back to some more Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition here today on the channel. We're back on Stainless Steel 6.4 on Savage AI. We're playing as the Republic of Novgorod, playing as Russia. So like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. Hope we've stroked the algorithm enough. Also watch to the end, it really helps. But we're continuing with the main objective of this series of russifying Eastern Europe, forming the Tsardom of Russia. Alright, welcome to the top of the turn. The Kuman Khan is dead, okay. So far in this series, we've managed to take a bunch of territory. Sudosk, Buryansk. Uh, we've managed to take Kiev and crush the duchy. Oh, okay, they've been destroyed again. I guess they spawned and got taken out by someone. Okay, we're still currently under the reign of Vesevolod, Vesevolod of Kiev. He's now in his late 60s or so. Um, and a jihad's been called. We're currently Prince Wise with- oh my god. Miss Slava. <laughs> okay, she's like an eight star. Or eight heart, rather. Alright, so. We're still currently at war with the Lithuanians. The war has now ended with the Grand Duchy of Kiev. And now we're going to make plans and preparations to go against Genoa. That own Kaffa, and I think they have um, like I don't know, was like roughly Rostov on Don. Um, I do want to try and get her married off, uh, preferably preferably to other nobles. I think you're probably the best. Beta is like 55. Um, I think we'll marry her to him. Yeah. So. Voy Islav Istoma, 35, so he's got 30 years. Seems a bit better. Quite loyal as well. Because unfortunately, um, historically, next in line, Mitsislav died when he was 14 against the damn Yukis. Oh well, it happens. So that marriage has now been secure. So we're going to be continuing to move into Belarusia. We've taken Minsk. And I guess we'll try and go to war with the Republic of Genoa as well. Now as we look to move against them, I'm sure the Turks are not going to be too happy. They want to create a Tartar Khanat, I guess. Alright, just going around to all my cities, we've got some spare money. So we want to try and continue to spread Eastern Russian Orthodoxy. As we have a huge chunk of territory, we could probably nearly call ourselves the United Kievan Rus. Because we're moving away from being just the low republic of Novgorod. Still want to push into the Baltic states. Uh, the Karezmians want trade. I'm still keeping a watchful eye on Poland and Hungary. Those major Catholic states are going to be the biggest problem. Um... I um, don't fear the Danes in Estonia that much, nor the Teutonic Order on those coastal territories. If they had Vilnius and Minsk, we might have an issue, but so far we're dealing with the Lithuanians, and a lot of those constructions, uh, recruitment has been complete. Okay, so we're going to probably declare war upon Genoa. Um, I will demand the territory, say, hey leave these lands except a we attack How could you ask and no these poor genoan merchants yes, don't know what's going to come to them so we're going to take a zack um we've got some allen units there so let's declare war upon them they actually did all, re all right to push over sort of kirch and take that so unfortunately mondello is about to be mon dead <laughs> unfortunately so, we'll move in and take this. Let's sack. And the main attack's going to be in Kaffa. So it's, okay, so it's still 35% orthodox. And the papacy is not going to like us, because I believe they have an alliance with them. And what's down here? Oh no, this is more Rostov on Don. Like further down here. Okay, right. Anyway, Kaffa. Which is... Oh, it's Feta something in real life. I can't remember the car. I think the castle's still there, is it not? It's not like Sevastopol. 
Which is on the west. Okay, so Vladimir's here. Um, so I think we allow Vladimir to take the command against the Lithuanians. And I think the f so Halic is there. Oh, interesting. So Halic is controlled by Poland at this time. That Valinian territory. Okay, so we probably want to try and look to push in the, into there eventually. Uh, we're still focusing on the Lithuanians because they're pagan currently in 1236. So Poland, the Danes and the other Catholic factions <laughs> aren't going to care that much as we're all sort of looking to carve up that territory. Obviously, a little bit further, the historic territory, than it is in real life. There are more so, more so a bit further west on that Baltic coast. Wait, did the Kumans attack me? I think they did too. Um, Izyaslav Yaropolt, I think I might take him. Uh, we've got a band of performing artists at our court. Let's spend a thousand. So we'll adopt... Yaro, he seemed alright. Still continuing to build chapels and offsetting them with those saucy buildings. <laughs> I don't know if I should say it out there what they are. Um, communal farming. Just makes the men happy, I guess, in the town. So Yaro Polk, you can sit in uh, Novgorod. Yeah, right, well, with the Kumans. As if they attacked me. Yes, sire. Okay, so yes. spies wise, still moving them about my lands. Um. Oh, that's annoying. Do they want peace? No. The Kerman Carnate. Seeing us being stretched now with a new war against the Republic of Genoa, we're going to have to deal with them. There is a rebel territory down here I would like to try and take if we can. Uh, I suppose it was inevitable. Same with probably a war against Poland. I don't want to go too far east because then we're going into, like, Mongol territory. And it takes so long to subjugate the east. I just don't know if it's overly worth it. <laughs> okay, so... To die the Tartar is besieging that. So, Kaffa is actually quite built up. So, Izia Slav, who is quite a renowned conqueror. He's married to Eupraxia. So, he probably should be... Third in line. He's won a lot of battles. Izia Slav, who is the king's... Well, king, czar faction leaders, son-in-law. He's won probably the most battles. I've been keeping track. We've got another princess here as well. We might look to marry into. I want to try and get Vladimir's command up a bit if we can. And we'll try and get her married off. So 18 turns into this let's play. Minsk is now firmly under our control. I could get Vladimir's son to maybe take the command. Tavor can govern and manage Minsk, I think. Oh, there's an army here. Okay, I didn't even see that. Well, we'll attack it then. And we'll allow the another prince of um, Novgorod to attack this. Vichyaslav? Vichyaslav? I try my best, guys. I'm from mostly... The British Isles, <laughs> my genetics and ancestry. 25% English, Scottish and Irish. I do have a little bit of Eastern Slavic in me, supposedly, looking at my genome. My grandfather is Austrian, and apparently the Austrian genetics is like 75% Germanic slash sort of Eastern European, so I'm only 7.5% ish, <laughs> supposedly. But I try my best. Okay, so let's deal with these Lithuanians. They've actually been our hardest adversary. I'm not even gonna lie. Their unit roster, particularly on Savage AI. Is really quite strong. So hopefully, Vichyaslav will be able to win his first victory. Mitsislav, his brother, is no more. We'll see how we go. Try and charge up here. Okay, army build wise, severely lack 
cavalry. <laughs> Don't have many archers as well. Only two units of spearmen. Do have some axemen. But yikes. Okay, they got stakes there as well. So, topography isn't really helping us. They're sitting up on top of the hill. Not the most conducive battlefield for us. So we're pushing uphill on an attack as they're shooting down upon us. We'll try and slowly creep around the right hand side of the hill, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so this is a really good battle here as the Lithuanian Axemen are holding. They think they got higher attack, I think. So we'll try and use superior tactics and numbers. They tried to set up an ambush because they knew we'd be wanting to finish off the last of the Lithuanians in their last settlement in Vilnius. There's only one way through the forest on that western side. They nearly got Torvmir, but he managed to slowly walk past and identify it for the prince. Okay, this is looking a bit better now. Running a little bit ragged up here. But so far, apart from some minor general mishaps, we're looking pretty good. So, once we take Crimea, our territory in and around the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov, we should be able to make peace with the Republic of Genoa. I can't imagine they want to be at war with me too long. It's going to be so annoying if they start amphibiously landing against me. That'd be so annoying. There is still a player bias for the AI, so they still might attack. Okay, so we are surrounding the Lithuanians here, but they are absolutely fighting to the bitter end. Look at this. They are holding so much. I mean, are winning the battle. We just need to continue this momentum up. Man, oh man, oh man. I love medieval two land battles. The sieges can get a little bit repetitive particularly if you're in the Far East, like we are. But oh, the campaign map, family tree, construction, diplomacy. Oh, it's just so good. We're going to have a lot higher losses here just due to the terrain. We're really struggling to push up here. Not the best army as well. This was not really meant to be fighting on the field this quick. This was more of a supplemental army for the Siege of Vilnius. The main army has the trebuchets, the archers, and the... Well, real proper units, eh? Okay, now they're starting to buckle. Jeez. <laughs> they're doing so, so well. Damn, Baltic scum. <laughs> Okay, they're badly smashed now. They've lost half of their men. Alright, can we try and swing you around here? So, looks like Vesevolod's grandson is going to win a glorious victory here. If he doesn't die himself here. I'm just going to charge in. It's a little bit scary. Doing this? Okay, we're good. Um, against the... Lithuanians. So far, we've mostly been fighting defensive wars, apart from the two offensive against Genoa and Kiev. Defensive against Cumans and Lithuanians. So, yeah. Alright, come on. They must be so, so close to capitulating. Get those Baltic spearmen. Oh, nice. We got him. Just speeding things up after running them down. A clear victory. Nice. We'll continue to ransom. 
But now that army's no more. So there seems to be a small contingent in Vilnius. Half a stack sitting outside. So we'll try and replenish and repair in Minsk where we can. I might go and rename some of this territory. Let's end the turn and continue. Okay, so the Kerman Carnet is attacked. We're, face, we're facing, uh, facing this Tartar. I might manually play that. Why? Okay. I think I can win this. Hang on a second. Bear with me. Okay. So, we have an archer unit. And an infantry. I think we can win this. So, let's move out here. Because we want to try and stop the battering ram from coming up. Heavy axe. So, our first battle against the Kumans. If we're lucky, we might get a man of the hour. We'll see how we go. Okay, we need to make sure the ram doesn't come up. Um, we need to make sure we maintain and have gateway control so our arrow towers keep peppering. Okay, we are firing on our own men, but it might be worth it. So they got cavalry. Hang on, if we can crush this full unit, can they, they might not be able to get in. Hang on, we're really not favored to win this one. It's literally like 90% not in our favor. Hang on. Because if we get rid of the axe infantry, there's nothing that can equip to the battering ram. Hmm, hang on. Maybe we should have had it more... favorable auto resolve. Hang on, move back. There we go. That will give us a clear shot for a little bit. Okay, let's start creeping back slowly. There we go. Keep doing that. Maybe go back in now. We've disrupted them a lot. There's only 27. And even if they do get back on it, we can just charge back out again. If they start moving. They are sitting under the ram now. 15. Yeah, I think if we... Completely destroy... This infantry unit, they can't come in. Because in Medieval 2, there's no way that you can dismount. You can in Shogun 2. Um, maybe even a tiller you could drop, grab it. I can't remember exactly. Alright. We'll just march out with the Axemen here. Get rid of those 11 units inside. Nice. And we've won. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted to see. So, we've managed to defend Murum. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. 19 turns in. Bunch of construction has been done. Bunch of poor yes. relations. Alright. Oh, so the Kumans are trying to push for here. Interesting, okay. Well, let's try and negotiate a peace treaty. Because yeah, I still don't want to be at war with them if I can avoid it. I'd love to subjugate them. Not manually take the territory. Make them pay tribute. Enjoying our federation. Alright, back down in Crimea. Um, we're going to play this one. Izyaslav is going to siege Kaffa. We actually are outnumbered by 200. We're going to be facing urban spearmen militia, some peasant crossbowmen, and some Genoese crossbowmen as well. All right, well, let's fight this one on the battlefield against the Republic of Genoa. You Ligarians are super far from home. Bringing up one battering ram. We haven't been taking huge, massive cities and castles, so we haven't needed a bunch of battering rams. Really, we've been relying on ladders the most, just because you can recruit them a lot quicker. Alright, let's surge on up. Siege Kaffa. Um, although it's a castle historically, it might not be a bad idea to convert it to a city. Trading on the Black Sea there would be really smart. It's probably not a bad idea to maybe send a diplomat to Anatolia. See what's going on down with the Turks and Byzantine. 
Empire, Byzantium. Um, yeah, I just wonder what's going on. Because I would love to take Constantinople. I believe it's currently rebel territory. But who knows? Our men have reached the gate with the battering ram. Okay, so thankfully this army build is a little bit more infantry heavy. Because we are sieging at the end of the day. I'm kind of surprised, but I'm kind of not surprised that Genoa doesn't really have that strong of a military presence here. I mean, they're probably focusing on internal Italian stability. Like, I can't imagine them sending that much re that much resources over here to try and hold it. I'm trying to remember historically as to how they ended up leaving. I'm assuming just like Cumans, Tatars, the Ottoman Empire annexed the peninsula. It's crazy that Crimea has changed so many times <laughs> from the Greek colony with Cameria. Various Russian states holding it. Imperials, Russia, Russian Empire, Soviet Union, Ukraine, Russian Fed, Genoa, Ottomans, Tatars, Crimean Incarnate. Okay. And now it's going to fall to the Republic of Novgorod in 1230 ish. Yeah, so once we sort of stabilize our territory and borders for the Republic of Novgorod, I might look to change up our fort and city policy. Obviously on the coast you're better off having cities because of the trade lanes and cities make you more money, but the castles obviously provide a better quality of defense for choke points and additional military infrastructure for units. So you want a bit of a mix. Okay, so we're moving slowly but surely into the castle. And Kaffa will fall. Just make sure everyone's got proper attack orders going out. They are retreating because they don't have a general nearby. There was one general in a Zac. It might have it, it might have been like Volgograd, kind of. No, it's not far east. Because like... Or maybe it was Rostov. And it's like Krasnodar. That we're moving to now. My geography is not exact. Okay, my archers here up on the walls, just peppering those urban militia. But as we have using Izyaslav, battle hardened commander for the wars against the Grand Duchy of Kiev, he's going to be easily be able to conquer the Crimean Oblast for the Republic of Novgorod. Then we got the Lithuanians, and then I'll try and sue for peace with Genoa. Um, I think our best thing is not to have any skirmishes or conflicts, ideally, against them. Ideally. Then we'd be able to sue for peace, but a diplomat's going to take quite a long time to get down there. I'm trying to think what other orthodox factions potentially we could make peace with. I'm not sure. Okay, so they are blocking me trying to make our way to the town square, so... Still might be a little bit of a grind. Okay. 
Okay, we're starting to surge now. Maybe we'll try and get those two additional bodyguards to flank. Yeah, maybe we should rename some of this territory. I don't know. Should we leave it as Kaffa? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I think, like, Minsk should probably should be Minsk. We are meant to be roostifying this territory, after all. Okay, we've initiated the countdown, which is nice. And probably need a cycle charge around the back. Oh, we should really, really prioritize targeting those Genoese crossbowmen. Just got to be careful there. I don't mind about the other two. Izzia Slav is the one we want to try and... Maintain and survive. But our first battle against a... Catholic faction... Is doing okay. We are fighting our Christian brethren. But we support the Patriarch of Moscow. Well, Novgorod, technically. Not the Pope in Rome. Okay. We've initiated the countdown. Just trying to keep those generals alive. And then Kaffa and Crimea will be annexed by the Republic of Novgorod. They've now lost half their men. Although we're winning a lot of battles, our unit roster is so weak and lightly armoured that we are winning, but we're just taking massive losses constantly. Alright, we're about to win via countdown, which is nice. Perfect. Let's end the battle there. Good victory. And Izyaslav has now taken care of us. So we're at war with three factions now currently. A bit much. We'll try and replenish and repair where we can. Let's build an Orthodox church. And it's sitting at... Not the highest. Okay, so... It's probably not a bad idea to go around and get a bunch of new units. Because we've had so many wars, we're looking a little bit fresh. We'll still have to keep an eye on the Poles and the Hungarians as we now border them in the Western Ukrainian Volinian Halic territory as we make plans to go against the last of the Lithuanians in Vilnius. It does seem like they used to have a territory to the west, but it looks like the Teutonic Order's taken them out. That's a massive army there. Not so much in Vilnius itself. That is a pretty big castle, so that's going to be... Easier said than done to take. So we'll try and move you up here. And we'll move those two armies. We'll get those mercenaries in because I think we're going to need them. Big time. And then we've got a an additional army on the way. So still wielding a lot of armies. Um, did I negotiate with the French? I don't think I, don't think I have actually. We've been sitting here for quite some time. 3,000? It's because we've got the money. They're just going to be cheeky and ask for it. All right, Prince Louis. I've come all this way. Might as well. And then we'll go to Bruges. Oh, okay. So they have Can I help? Belgium, which is interesting. Okay. And we'll try and move to Krasnodar. I, I guess we'll move the diplomat place. down here. Oh, we found some Turks. Huh. They're trying to move into our sphere what of influence. Interesting. We've got the other princess here. She's not the best. Um, oh, I could marry her to... Vladimir's brother, potentially 15, not the best. Because he, he hasn't received a marriage offer. Yaro, I could do. He's really far north, though. Anyway, we're going to go through some recruitment. And I'm going to slowly wrap things up. Unfortunately, on that note, it's time to end the episode and video here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed episode 3 of this Medieval 2 Total War Stay in the Steel 6.4 Savage AI campaign. We're 138 turns in, still under the reign of ya uh, Vesevalod and Vladimir. We've managed to knock out the Grand Duchy of Kiev, still at war with the Kumans. We don't want to get distracted and too sucked into that war. Prioritizing construction and recruitment at the moment for those losses. We need to try and get some 
better quality troops back. We've managed to throw out the Republic of Genoa from our Crimea, Crimea River, Genoa. <laughs> and uh, I guess we'll try and make peace with them. We're going to be west of that Ligeria territory eventually at some point. And we'll try and take Vilnius and take out the last of the Lithuanians. Hopefully the Teutonic Order, Poland or Hungary doesn't surprise attack us, but or, or even the Danes, you never know. Um, there's still that Finnish territory we haven't looked into. I've been so distracted. I think that's a rebel territory. That starts off pretty early. Anyway, unfortunately on that note, like, subscribe, I gotta go. All that good YouTube stuff. Thanks for watching to the end. Leave a comment for the algo. And, uh, yeah, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name's Ben Simsey. Much love from Australia. Goodbye. Stay tuned for episode four coming out tomorrow.